Welcome to our unboxing video of my brand new Cat Trike 559. Normally when you pick up your Cat Trike, it's already been assembled by your dealer. However, we wanted to do this ourselves. I contacted Cat Trike and they had no problem with that and it would not void the warranty. The end of the box is a little crushed in and I was quite afraid that there would be a problem with this trike. See, this is my second Cat Trike 559. The first had all kinds of problems and I sent it back under warranty. White isn't normally a color Cat Trike uses anymore. However, most of the frames I've ever ridden have been white. I contacted Dave Whitmore at Cat Trike. He found some white powder coat and made me a white trike. Thanks, Dave. The rear fender was next to come out, followed by the seat. The new padded seat cushion adds a lot of extra support and comfort, and I highly recommend it to anyone. The large pocket on the back of the seat is great to hold a trike repair kit, and on the other side of the seat there's a long pocket that is supposed to hold a pump, but ours falls out. Under the seat on the right side is another pocket which is great to hold your cell phone. And yes, they missed a small piece of Velcro on the back of the seat. The paperwork that comes with it is basically a packing list of everything that's included in the box. The next part out was the tie rod and it was just rattling against my frame. There are two parts boxes that come with the Cat Trike 559, a small one and a large one. The small box had a bad dent in the side from sitting on top of the rear wheel cog assembly. As you can see, both boxes sit on top of the wheels. And the large box was dented in as well. What really bothered me was when I pulled out the frame, there was nothing between the frame and the wheels protecting it. Now this is a real problem. The boxes on top of the wheels can damage the wheels. The frame on top of the wheels can damage the frame. There's got to be a way better way to do this. And finally, out came the Cat Trike flag. The tie rod was the first thing I inspected and had minor scratches on it, but the tie rod ends looked in fine shape and all the parts were there. I was really worried about the rear wheel cog assembly, that it might be bent. The large cogs on the cog assembly actually have a spider work of metal holding them in place. They're not solid and they can be bent or damaged very easily. Lucky for me, mine were just fine. Next, I started inspecting the spokes. My first cat trike had all kinds of spoke problems. I had bent spokes, as well as the black finish was also damaged. These spokes were the same. There was all kinds of nicks and damage in the black finish as well. Then on to the first front wheel. The first thing I noticed was I had a scratch along the rim. I don't know if this happened in transit with the boxes on top or directly at Catrike plant. They also had damaged spokes as well. And what I started to notice was the finish was damaged almost on every spoke. Maybe it's caused when the machine that puts these wheels together comes in to tighten the nipples and to adjust them. Catrike should consider using non-coated stainless steel spokes, which would get rid of this problem altogether. This second wheel was a carbon copy of the first. The, all the spokes had uh, finished damage, and once again, I had another place where the rim got scratched. The first box I opened was the large box. As you can see here, there is quite a dent in the side from sitting on top of the wheels. When I opened the box, I was so careful with the X-Acto knife not to damage anything inside. In this box, you'll find the boom, and connected to the boom is the bottom bracket and the crank arm assembly with the chain rings. Also, you'll find two handlebars and stem assemblies already put together. Another thing that's also in this box, which was really great to see, was Catrike included the FSA bottom bracket and crank set instruction book, which includes all the torque specs. When I unbag the boom, there's an interesting optical illusion that takes place. The pipe that holds the front derailleur leans towards the chain rings and makes the little pipe out the side of it look crooked. This little pipe holds your flashlight or a computer, but it's kind of a funny optical illusion that takes place. There are some alignment issues with this boom and the parts, but we'll talk about those in later videos. The front derailleur also needs to be adjusted correctly. There was also quite a large chunk of paint and metal taken out of one of the two crank arms. I wasn't very happy. Next, I unbagged the left handlebar and stem assembly. The first thing I noticed was the quality of the finish. There were minor dings, dents, and scratches all over everything, as well as there was a good neck taken out of my bar end shifter. All cat trikes come with a parking brake, 
And what that is, is a piece of Velcro that hooks onto the end of the brake lever and pulls the brake lever back against the handlebar. Not that dissimilar from the way this cable is holding it back. We prefer to use two bungee cords tied in a small loop. Works far better. The barrel adjustment knob is something to really look at. If the small knob is cross-threaded, it's angled like this, and basically it's useless to send it back to Catrack. I then unbagged the right handlebar and stem assembly. It was basically a carbon copy of the other. There was minor imperfections in the finish and scratches, dings, and dents. They could do a far better job with this than they are. One of my pet peeves is how Catrike wraps the brake cable in this tight loop and then places it over the brake lever. It guarantees a scratching of your brake lever, just like this one and the one before. I was very disappointed in these parts, and it's probably the reason why I'm doing a voiceover instead of you actually hearing my first narration as I was taking all this stuff apart. Now you may be thinking that I'm being a little too picky, and maybe I am, but this is a $4,000 trike in Canada, and I believe that for $4,000, anybody deserves the best. Next, I open the small box of parts. As you can see, it's been badly dented in from sitting on top of the rear wheel cog assembly. Once again, I was very careful opening the box with this X-Acto knife. I didn't want to damage anything inside. When I opened the box, my first impression was that this box is too large for the number of parts that's inside it. The first thing out was the Cat Trike owner's manual along with the Welcome to the Cat Trike family letter. Next out was a bag of reflectors. Now we're not going to install these. Instead, we're going to use powered flashing lights. Next, I found the rear wheel skewer. It was just rattling around inside the box without any sort of protective packaging. This is an open-ended skewer. There are open and closed-ended skewers available, and we'll talk about those in later videos. This one was badly scratched. Next out of the box was a SRAM X7 rear derailleur. Now, this is the mountain bike version. As I started to unpack it, I realized there was a yellow tinge to the bag, and that's a great sign. See, this part was actually covered in a thin coating of oil and it worked flawlessly. There was no cosmetic damage to it whatsoever. Thank you to SRAM or whoever packaged this part. It was absolutely perfect. The next part of the box was right side spindle and steering arm assembly. Now also attached to this is all the components for your headset, as well as the Avid BB7 mountain disc brake caliper assembly. I was really concerned about the crown race. That's the part on the bottom of the spindle here, the little silver part, that the bearings for the headset sit on. My last trike, it was badly damaged. This one has some pretty good nicks in it, but at least is serviceable. The rest of the part had lots of nicks, scratches and dents, and I wasn't very happy. The Avid disc brake caliper assembly had no problems cosmetically with it and looked in fine order. Now the headset is made by FSA, which includes the crown race on the bottom, the main bearing on the bottom, a Teflon bearing on the top with a little spacer, then a dust cap, then the final washer on the top with I believe it's an M6 bolt. The next part I was the next spindle and steering arm assembly, but attached to it I found this little bag. What I realized had happened was it is the bag for the kickstand. Somebody had torn it open and this thing had been rattling around inside the box since Florida. Now the part itself was badly scratched, but my real concern was that little stainless steel part that sticks out the side. It actually helps direct the chain into the kickstand as the trike is folded. That little part of stainless steel is quite sharp and very well could have caused some of the scratching and dents on the parts inside this box. The next bag out was a small bag of parts, which includes the trike flag holder, also the rear derailleur hanger, and a bunch of other nuts and bolts and screws. Next, I unpackaged the left side spindle and steering arm assembly. And once again, it has the Avid brake assembly attached to it and the headset. At this point, I was getting quite discouraged. And once again, as soon as I opened it up, I could see that there was all kinds of scratches and difficulties. The Crown Race, once again, had some small dings in it, but was very serviceable. And in this particular case, the Avid brake had also had some damage to it, both cosmetically and also there was quite a ding out of it. I wasn't impressed at all. 
That bar assembly that's attached to the steering arm is actually to hold a speed transducer for a cycling computer. The Welgo pedals were the next item out of the box. All Welgo pedals I have ever seen grind when they're brand new. I will try to do a service video on how to make this grinding or some of it go away. Next out of the box was the KMC 10 speed chain. Catrike on their website said it should be FSA. It's not. The Avid Disc Brake router bag had lots of slits in it, possibly caused from the kickstand, and the routers themselves had some scratches and dings on them. The mirror was the last thing out of the box, and it had a big ding in the side of it as well. Now these are pretty tough mirrors, and I'm pretty sure that there's nothing wrong with it. That's the end of the small box. And now it's time to unpack the frame. As I removed the plastic wrap from the frame, I really noticed how shiny this particular trike was. My first one was very dull and it was very disappointing. This one was gleaming white. Also, my first trike had lots of specks of dust in the powder coat. This one didn't. It only had a few minor specks. Whoever did the work on this particular trike and its powder coating spent much more time being careful and being meticulous with what they were doing. Thank you very much to whoever did it. I really appreciate it. This finish on this trike was phenomenal. Next, my wife and I just spent a few minutes removing all of the protective packaging on the trike. Our little work stand worked out great, and in later videos we'll show you how to build one. There were some minor scratches and problems with this trike, but we'll talk more about those in detail in our upcoming episode, Trike Frame Inspection, which will include an inspection of the welding as well as the trike powder coat finish. If I had picked up my brand new Cat Trike 559, already assembled for my retailer, all I would have wanted to do was go for a ride. I would have never spent the time I needed to to find the issues that I found by unboxing and assembling my trike myself. I hope your retailer did their job when they assembled your trike and did everything properly. However, if you want to check yourself or you want to do some service, I hope the upcoming videos of assembling the trike as well as servicing the trike will be of help. For those of you who are less mechanically inclined, the upcoming episodes of riding hopefully will bring some joy to your heart. Thank you very much for watching our video, and I hope to see you on the trail.